If you ever wondered what are the advantages of using a Python generator, then you are in the right video. Think about it. Has it ever happened to you that you are trying to read a huge CSV file, but then you get memory errors? One of the ways to solve this issue is by using a Python generator. Now, if you are a Python developer or an enthusiast, you must have heard about Python generators. But think about it. How often do you use them? Also, when we talk about generators, we all tend to think about yield. Those are generator functions. Did you know there is also something called as generator expressions? So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about generator functions, generator expressions, their advantages, their disadvantages, and why you should use them more often. Unlike normal functions that receive an input and return a result immediately, generator functions produce results only when needed. How do they do that? Python generators are able to suspend and resume their execution around the point of value generation. In simple terms, they are going to return you a generator object that is an iterator. Then you can iterate on the object to get the results. This is achieved by using the yield keyword. Let's dive into the code. Here you can see I have defined a function to return the square of all the numbers in the input list. If I run this code, we can see the result output. All straightforward. Now, if I want to convert this into a generator function, all I have to do is replace the return keyword with yield. And unlike the previous function, we don't need a temporary list to append the values. So now outside the function, we can call our generator function by result equal to get underscore square example list. If I print result, you will see that it is a generator object. Now there are three ways to go through the generator object. I can use the for loop to iterate over it and when I do, I can get the results. I can use the list built in method to convert the iterator to a list, which is the second method. The third method is we can use the next method and that will start yielding value from the series. What is the next method? Every iterator object in Python defines a next method. The next method returns the next item in the iteration until all the items are over, in which case it throws a stop iteration error. So here, if I do print next result, we will see the first value. If we print it again, we will see the second result and so on until we get the stop iteration exception. Now notice one thing. For example, if we look at our previous function, once I get a generator object as a result, I am iterating over the result to check the values returned by my generator using a simple for loop. However, if I try to print next result after my for loop, Python will return us a stop iteration error. So remember, generators are single iteration objects. They only support one active iteration. Now you can also have multiple yield statements inside your function. Here you can see. I am yielding different values of the variable name inside my function. When I use the next built in method, you will see both the values I am yielding from the function and then a stop iteration exception is raised. Let's now talk about generator expressions. This is where iterables meet comprehensions. You can write a list comprehension like here. And if you run this, you are going to get the expected result. To convert this into a generator, just replace square brackets with parentheses. So you can write it as x exponential 2 for x in range 4 and closed within parentheses. Now again the behavior is same as that of generator function. But from the perspective of comprehension expression, we get a generator object back that returns the value from the iterator exactly where it left off. Then again, I can convert it to a list by the list method like this. Or we can also use the next method to iterate over all the values in the iterator. Now we can also have generator expressions inside a built-in function like list comprehension. For example, here I'm trying to sort the square of all the numbers coming out of this expression, but in a reverse order. And this returns the result list immediately. Now don't get confused as to why it returned a list rather than a generator. It's because we are using the sorted built-in method. 
what this does is it converts any data type to a list now you might ask why go through so much trouble what are the advantages of using python generators generators don't require the entire result set to be constructed all at once like the list comprehension therefore they are very useful for optimizing memory space the second thing is the entire result production is divided into smaller intervals therefore a programmer does not have to wait for his entire result set to be constructed all at once also very subjectively speaking there are also other advantages to python generators let's see what they are here you can see i'm trying to write a small piece of code that converts my list containing strings to upper case and joined by a hyphen now to this i'm using the join method that takes hyphen as the parameter on a list comprehension that converts my letters to upper case here you can see i'm unnecessarily creating a temporary list that is not even going to be retained in our results all we need is a string right in this case i can use a generator the same expression but with parentheses and then it outputs the exact same result without creating any temporary lists on the other hand let's be honest generators also have the disadvantage of being slow here you can see i'm using a library called as timeit to time how long my code is running you can see that time wise the list comprehension is faster than generator now there are obvious trade offs to using generators in python however when it comes to huge data sets generators will be clearly way ahead in the game like i mentioned to you about the csv issue that is one scenario where you can easily get away by using a python generator now i don't want to make this video too long so i won't be discussing it here however in the second episode of python discourse we are going to talk all about reading huge csv files using python and that is where you will see a more practical usage of python generators so thank you everyone if you really liked my video make sure to subscribe to my channel i'll really appreciate it thank you guys i'll see you in the next tutorial